Hi, this is Gabe from TVM, bringing you another episode of How We Did It. On today's episode of How We Did It, we're going to continue our stunt dummy double creation series with his skeleton and joint creation. Remember, these videos aren't designed to show you how to operate various tools, such as hand tools, power tools, flamethrowers, etc., as we abuse them frequently. So, if you don't fully understand how to use these tools, and would like to keep your fingers, toes, hair, please learn how to safely operate these tools before attempting any of these projects. Well, here's a, a demonstration of what he can do. If you notice right now, he's sitting down. So uh, to stand him up, what I'm going to have to do is, of course, like a human does, straighten his legs out. Probably have to do it one at a time here. It is a little difficult to do by yourself. Again, this dummy can stand by himself, and the point was to make him look as close to me as possible. So next, we're going to show you how we created each joint. This is what allows the articulation of the joints. So, we're going to show you what these joints consist of. First, there is a 5 16 nut on the end of the bolt that's inside the golf ball. Here. It's a washer to hold it in place. The bolt is actually screwed onto this one inch PVC fitting. There is another nut making sure that the golf ball stays in place. Now I'm going to show you how tight the golf ball is inside this fitting. Now that we've got it out, and I had to chase that ball all the way around the house, the golf ball has the golf ball has this type bolt and a hole drilled through the center of it, like so bolt fits. To get it back in, simply apply a lot of pressure. Now we're going to show you how we constructed these joints. Now for our dummy, we needed 15. Three here, three here, three here, and three for each leg. Ready to get started. First, we're going to drill a half inch hole about a quarter inch deep into the golf ball to create a countersink hole for our bolt. Now, I don't know about you, but it is damn hard to drill a hole into a circular object without something to hold it. So, we're going to set it inside our vise here. Carefully attempt to locate the center of your golf ball. And remember, this hole only has to go about a quarter inch to a half inch deep. Now, we're going to use a quarter inch drill bit to drill a hole for a bolt. Remember to clean out all of the excess rubber that's inside your golf ball when drilling. You're going to have to repeat this process for all 15 joints that you're going to create. So now it's time to put our bolt inside of our golf ball. If you drilled it at the same size that we drilled it, you're going to have to screw your bolt in. So 
So this is as far as our wrench will allow us to pull the head into the golf ball. So whenever we put our nut on the opposite side, screw it in, it's going to suck the head further on down. Now if you notice, the head is no longer protruding outside of the golf ball. Upon assembly, if you tighten this nut, it will actually increase or decrease the stiffness of your joint. Now we're going to go ahead and attach our ball joint to our cap as this makes it easier whenever we're creating our joint socket. If you notice, we've already drilled a hole the same size as we drilled in our golf ball for our bolt inside the cap socket. First, we're going to screw on the cap. Now, we're going to put a nut and washer on the inside. When it's all said and done, it'll look something like this. You're going to repeat that process for however many joints you want to create. Uh, for us it was 15. Now we're going to show you how to create the joint socket piece. First, we're going to cut a short little piece of PVC to hold our coupling piece. We're going to place that in our vise here. And we're going to tighten the vise around the short piece of PVC, not the coupling. It's not necessary to tighten this short piece of PVC, as doing so could cause it to crack. All we need is for it to be secured enough to hold our coupling in place while we beat in our golf ball with a hammer. Now we're going to dremel out a hole for our arm joint so that it can do a full 90 degree arm leverage. Now, we're going to put this ball inside this socket. In order to do so, we're going to have to heat it up for us, we're going to be using this heat gun. Now make sure you evenly heat all the way around the socket piece. Because if you don't, whenever you're inserting your ball, it could pop out on one side or the other, depending on whether it's cold or hot. Make sure to have a bucket of water and a rag close at hand. Once the ball is placed inside the socket, you're going to wrap your rag around it and compress the ball inside of the socket. After holding it for a couple seconds, you're going to take it immediately and put it inside your bucket of water. Doing so is going to accomplish two things. It's going to freeze your socket into place and it's going to stop the golf ball from melting. So, we've made all of our joints, we've got all of our body pieces, we've got our head cast here. Uh, if you notice on the joints, we've got an additional piece that we haven't talked about yet. It's uh, this hose clamp, and the reason that we have it is so we can adjust the rigidity of each piece, of each joint. And if you notice, on each piece we've got the first part of it underneath the ball joint here, and over the top of the ball joint 
on the back side. Um, it's going to grab the ball on this side and it'll make it solid for all intents and purposes. And the tighter it is, the tighter the joint's going to be. Sometimes you'll have to apply leverage to actually get the ball to move, which is how we want it. Now you don't have to do that, but again, for our specific usage, we, we want it that solid. Now, all of our pieces, our body pieces, were cut specific to my dimensions, seeing as we want the dummy to be lifelike and look like me. And if you notice here, we've got our two arm pieces that are this long. Now, it doesn't look like it's the same size as me, but that's because there's two pieces missing. And for the hand joint, we have this piece, which is, you know, another inch and a half, two inches. And then you have your elbow joint here. Now it's looking more correct. So, whenever you're creating your arm pieces, you have to allow for the amount of space that the joints co cover up. <laughs> Alright, so now we're going to be putting everything together. Um, as this is our final assembly, we are going to be gluing our PVC pieces together. If you want to sit back and watch, it will be on time lapse. should only take a matter of seconds. So here we are with our finished articulating dummy with face mask. Um, if you were watching the video earlier, then you know that there were a couple tools that we didn't go over, such as the PVC pipe cutting saw and the PVC glue. Um, we were assuming that you are okay with hand tools and know how to glue PVC pipe together. So this really isn't for the beginner. Um, however, we showed you how we did it, and this is our final product. So John and I were talking and well, he's not too happy with his articulation on his joints. So we decided to make some modifications to them and if you want to check out what those modifications are, we've got another video that pertains to this series. Now you can check that out. But as for this video, I think we're finished. Well, thanks for watching. Um, this concludes this episode of How We Did It. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe to our channel, leave a comment, tell us what you liked about our video. Um, if this is the first one that you've watched, we have several others pertaining to Articulating Dummy. You can check those out. And uh, thanks for watching.